So three, two, one. So at this point, the session is being recorded. So going forward, now everything that is being said will be recorded. And you know, um, I'll I'll share the video link with Anne, and you guys could you know, use it however way you want. And if you don't want it to be public, just don't share the link. I'm not going to be personally sharing with anybody. And so if there's things that are said that you know, may be you know, require confidentiality, then you know, just make sure it's within your group and however way you guys want to uh, use that video, you're free to do so. Um, so with that, I will get uh, going. So uh, just a, a little personal introduction. Um, so I am his beloved, first and foremost, uh, 23 years wa walking with the Lord. Uh, I'm also a husband, uh, 18 years, and I have three kiddos. They're 10, 12, and 14. Uh, so I have, uh, this is a golden year in terms of having a uh, elementary school, a middle school, and a high schooler. So all three, and thanks to the pandemic, we don't have to have three drop-offs and three pickups. It's all in, at, right here at home. Um, I have over uh, 15 years of teaching experience. I've taught in person, I've taught online, I've taught blended courses, you know, and you know, so lots of sort of in interactions with uh, students in different uh, modalities. And for the past decade or so, I've sort of transitioned more to an administrative role, um, overseeing a teaching learning center and also like an ed tech uh, unit. And my areas of expertise are sort of instructional effectiveness, uh, faculty development, educational training uh, and design, uh, and online and blended learning. Uh, I also have, you know, not recently, but in the past, I have done a lot of, you know, publications around these types of topics. And I've also, you know, enjoyed doing presentations and, and uh, at sort of local universities and also in sort of webinars like these. So I, um, I feel like this is uh, really in my sweet spot. So I appreciate the another opportunity to be able to share some of the things I've learned. Uh, here's our session outcomes and activity. Uh, just, uh, you know, as an educator, I always want to make sure that uh, all the learners are clear about what they're getting into and what hopefully they will get out of. And so the, the four parts, as I mentioned earlier, are going to be focused on uh, how do you prepare thoroughly. And then we're going to shift to talking about how you start actively, and then you're going to engage uh, meaningfully, and then we're going to end reflectively. Uh, my goal is to uh, hopefully demonstrate what I am talking about as opposed to just talking about it. And, and so a lot of the things I'm going to try to do will involve you and engage you and, and as a way to kind of mirror what I hope um, what, you, know, you can do and what you can do in your own webinar session. So we're going to start uh, with this first interactive activity. Um, so this is a personalization strategy. And what I want you to do is just to take a moment and think of an adjective that reflects your personality. Uh, and that starts with the same letter as your first name. And I know for the group, it, you guys maybe have to agree on just one one. Uh, adjective. And what I want you to do is to rename yourself by clicking on that uh, little uh, webcam video of yourself on the top right, there's going to be a little three dot and you just right click on that. Uh, you click on that and then you can then change your name. So I'm going to just demonstrate what I mean. So I'm going to uh, click on my little image and I'm going to rename myself. Uh, oops. Uh, let me see here. So my, my first name starts with an M. So I'm going to have uh, my adjective will be meaningful Mike. <laughs> and the reason why, well, well, we can explain a little later, but I, I love to engage in meaningful activities. I'm not a, uh, what they call a small talker. Um, I, you know, I, I love to dive right into conversations. I love, love to engage in sort of big ideas. I love, and so, so I'm gonna call myself Meaningful Mike. So uh, if you can just take a moment, like I said, if you can hover over your, your picture on the top right, there should be a little three little button. It, it looks maybe similar to this interface here. And then there should be a, an option to rename. 
um, if you can go ahead and do that, uh, that would be great because uh, I, I just want to see some of the, you know. Click on the name itself. Hmm? You can also click on the name itself. Or you can click on the name itself. That, that works too, it looks like. Oh, there, yeah, right. So I'll give you guys oh, admin, and I, I, I could have guessed at that, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen your administrative prowess at work uh, in through our emails. So, okay. serious story. Okay, um, Tom, terrific. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Where's Tom? Where is? So you, you can see, it, you know, if your your view of oh, other people okay. is on, you might have to expand it. There, there's different options to see, <laughs> like a gallery view uh, of who is who. So, Ben, I think you should have just been Big Ben. <laughs> <laughs> okay, multi-interested Mark. That's great. I could have done that too. I, I think that I, I was, you know, verging on multitasking or multi-interest. Uh, bombastic Ben, <laughs> timid Tim. Uh, Don't do it. <laughs> may, maybe a, a purposeful Paul. I see there. Uh, greedy Jung. I guess that's that's what the group decided on was greedy. Is that the? <laughs> okay. Lively Liz. All right, perfect. Thank you. Well, um, I appreciate the uh, engagement here. This is, I think, a uh, a good way to kind of get to know who's in the audience for me, because I I think sometimes just the name of those people in the audience is you know not really that helpful, and so having them to provide a little bit more information about uh, their personality or something like that is is helpful. So thank you for that. So um, here's a picture uh, from a photo stock site that I found. And my question for you is, what do you think is going on in this picture? What headline, if you will, oh, like if you were to write a headline for this you know, picture, uh, what would you give this picture? Like what headline would you give this picture? So uh, maybe you know, if you can just throw out no, a sentence or a few words or, or even just a word. Uh, just go for it. Bored. Bored. Need to pick me up? <laughs> okay. What I else? Started. Okay. Hey. First, yes. Yeah. Yes. What is this guy really telling me? <laughs> uh, you're, you're welcome to also use the chat too for those who don't want to speak up you know i i see multi-interested mark uh saying struggling to focus yeah yep anything else that come to mind when you see this picture it's frozen it's frozen yeah yeah this looks like there is writer's block yeah yeah, yeah. Like when I look at it, is I, I hope I hope that's not what you guys are feeling in the session right now. <laughs> um, it, it's one of those. You no, know, I think as a presenter or a facilitator, that's this is probably the worst um, uh, thing that you want to see your your audience experiencing because that's something that you just like you know you want to be exciting you want to be engaging you want to be lively you want to make sure that they're getting as much out of it and this is something that it's uh, no it's just sort of like oh, I, I hope it's not the case and and I, I hope after today's session um, you will not get this kind of reaction in your future webinar so let's uh, uh, let me gonna do a quick poll to kind of get a sense of your experience with webinars. So I'm gonna launch a poll, uh, a three question poll, and then I'm gonna uh, ask you to, so you should be able to see a, a window that just popped up on your screen. Did you, do you see that? Is there a window that just popped up with some questions? So go ahead and answer each of those questions. So the first question is how much experience do you have delivering a webinar? Um, Mike, we Stuart, need yes. We need a definition of webinar. Um, All of us have a huge. Usually, amount of it's a person presenting content 
mostly uh, with, it, so it's not like a open-ended Q&A or it's usually somebody delivering content for most of the session. Like a, a, either one or a, like a few per people delivering content and the rest of the audience are just mostly listening and some Q&A at the end, but it's not a sort of Q&A kind of, so does that make sense, Dirt? Yeah, so go ahead and um, answer those three questions so that uh, we can see what the, your experience is uh, like in terms of webinars. So the first question I said was about delivering, like giving a webinar. Uh, a second question is about uh, just using video conferencing tools like Zoom. Uh, you could, it could have been you know, other tools like you know, Teams or, or um, Meet or you know, other tools, but just some sort of video conferencing tool. And then the third is about uh, what are your top two concerns based on those uh, available options. All right, so there, are, okay, so all the votes are in. So let me um, see if I can summarize. Um, so I'm gonna share the results here. So are you able to see the results? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so looks like uh, it's a fairly even split between those with no experience and those with some experience or, uh, or plenty of experience. Uh, one person had plenty of experience. Um, and then the second question about the video conferencing tool, uh, majority of you have some experience. And then the last uh, question about uh, concerns, looks like finding engaging activities. I'm, uh, and then the second one would be using video conferencing tool, perfect. So uh, this is great. Again, uh, it's always important when you're doing um, a webinar to get as much information about your audience as upfront as possible, because um, that way you can tweak your your session and you know find out what they're looking for and how to you know make sure you can address those. Uh, so, for you in particular, this is where I I want to get into some. Uh, specifics and I, I some of you did provide the feedback through the registration form which i appreciate but um I, the question i have for you all is what would make this particular session a success for you and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment so the question is what would make this session a success for you so if you keep that in your head so i'm going to stop sharing my my screen and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask if if one person, uh, can I vol ask one volunteer to be the timekeeper? Uh, just so anybody want to volunteer as a timekeeper? No, all you have to do is look at your time when I say start and then, okay, Anne. Anne was the first hand. <laughs> it fits her personality. So, um, so Anne will be our timekeeper. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to ask each person to, uh, this, to answer this question. What would make this session a success for you. And you don't have to be you know, elaborate or anything, just a few words or a sentence or two, but I wanna be able to hear from each person. Um, so, uh, and if you can start the timer, then, um, and then I'm gonna ask uh, Tim, Tim and Tim to start. What would be a success for you? Um, if I could really understand the difference between doing a webinar and doing a lecture or, or seminar face-to-face. Uh, Perfect. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, bombastic Ben, go for it. Well, I learned something. <laughs> you, you learned something. Okay. Perfect. Uh, journeying John. Um, the, to get a, to understand something about getting the, a balance right between delivering content yes. and engaging with the participants. Yes. Mm. That's a, that's a great great point engaging engaging versus uh content you know the the, the two the engaging audience and the content perfect david what would well, make this well just, just have more discussion really so it's not a one-way traffic yeah so interaction between back and forth that, yeah perfect thank you uh tom terrific this new tools to use while giving webinars and, and what, what's out there 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. Be, being able to get views that that's that sometimes, you know, that's some, some of the most beneficial things from a webinar is being able to kind of get new ideas and new perspectives on things that we thought we, you know, we knew. So, all right. Uh, lively Liz. Um, tips that I can apply to my next webinar. <laughs> I, I hope I you will get that. <laughs> all right. Uh, transform guard. Uh, from Terry, yeah. Oh, Jerry, um, Jerry, really, the whole idea of how to make it interesting, how to keep people interested over the period of time. Um, yeah, it's all about captivating or engaging with your people. Having okay. attended a number of, of not very good webinars, I'm yes. thinking what to do. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, multi interested Mark. Um, how to get beyond a uh, webinar appearing gimmicky and make the technology um, invisible. Yes. Thank you. Yes, that's important to not let the technology kind of dominate, but rather just the content and interactions be the uh, in the front end. And then the, the room, the folks uh, in the room. Anyone? What do you know? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to begin before I can say what to expect. All right, All right. The, the jury is out. So you have no, no expectations, which is a good thing and a bad thing. <laughs> All right, uh, serious word. Well, I'm, I'm looking for some guidance about what's, what's possible with this format. Um, and I'm actually fairly skeptical whether there's any any new possibilities so it may be what are the limitations of the yeah. format and to be mm -hmm. to be aware that one isn't mm -hmm. trying to do things that you can't do so it's well known there are limitations of lectures yes, yes definitely. it's actually a very bad way of teaching skills yes definitely so yeah um you know what, what, what so my low level aim is find out what the limitations are and not blunder into them. Okay. And, and my high level hope is to discover potential that I'm not aware of at the moment. Okay. All right. Good. Definitely. We will talk about some of those limitations and, and the, sort of your boundaries of what's possible. And then finally, last but not least, Paul. I think my um, biggest concern, Mike, is, is the technology and um, being able to use the technology so it doesn't get in the way and actually works and serves serves doing the webinar okay um, so my my hope would be to learn something about how to use the technology effectively in service of the webinar okay all right perfect so Anne, if you can stop the timer how much time has transpired oh you're you're muted right now four minutes and 15 seconds so four minutes and 15 seconds so in four minutes and 15 seconds I was able to go around the room, except for Anne. And Anne, I, I, you know, if you want to, you can add your, your what, makes, what would make the session a success for you right now. But the, the, the idea of what I wanted to demonstrate in this session is that it doesn't take a lot of time to get everyone engaged and to actually be meaningfully engaged. You know, I was able to hear from each of you what this, what would success look like for you in this session? And that's, I think, such an important, uh, you know, and I'll talk a little bit about you know, sort of what it means to you know, set expectations and how to you know, address those as you go. But so Anne, well, I wanna give you an opportunity. So what would make this session a success for you? And the idea is to help engage students and not just be observers, yeah. to actually engage and facilitate learning. Yeah, so so perfect. So so in you know, in four minutes we were able to. I mean, in with you know we have what uh, twelve people or so, thirteen people plus the folks in the room. Uh, it's it doesn't take a lot of time to get engagement going, and and that's you know one of my my point here with this demonstration is that you you can definitely. Uh, get personal and get deep and get meaningful very quickly. And, and that, that was just an example of that. So, um, so we're gonna now uh, transition to the actual content. So all that was really a, a quick 
warm up and and you know don't necessarily need to do that in your own webinar because you no know, it's my uh, my purpose for that was really to get you up set up and started but in a lot of ways what i did in that first session is some of what i'm going to be talking about here you know and so i'm going to now talk more practically uh, about you know the 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 elements of the webinar so i'm going to start with uh, how to prepare thoroughly um, software is sort of the first thing um, and you know like i said you know there are a variety of tools that you can use and you know we're just using zoom which is probably the the most commonly used one and i'm assuming that this is the same tool that you'll be using but if you use a different tool a lot of what i'll share will be applicable because most uh, video conferencing tools will have similar functionalities. Um, you know, so a couple of things I wanted to say about these things is that uh, you want to make sure you invest some time up front just to understand the basic functions and features you know, of the tool that you're going to be using. You know, spend some time you know, on, uh, on it by yourself, just exploring the different you know, fe uh, features and, and be able to know that it's you know, like where the buttons are for whatever function you want, because you don't uh, you really want to avoid having a, using a tool where you're still kind of, you know, muddying your way through like, okay, where is the mute button for folks or where do I press to get the, you know, the polling tool app to work and just as, as long as you spend some time understanding and, and being comfortable with the tool, then that's great. And I would encourage you maybe to use it in sort of low stakes situation, like, you know, maybe a, uh, like, you know, to set up a meeting with a colleague and be able to kind of go through a you know, 10 minute session so that at least you get comfortable um, with the tool. And in particular for, for Zoom, you know, it, you know, these are sort of just the basic functionalities. I, I've numbered them one through eight here are sort of the, the, the most commonly used tools. Uh, I would say even um, not all, like especially for seven and eight, you know, with the, the so the polling app, the breakout room, and the reaction tools may or may not be used in, in some sessions or may by most people. So the my point is know your your tools, functions, and features and be able to utilize them the best way you can. So that that's the real quick thing about the the Zoom. And we can get to some of the questions you might have specifically about Zoom in, in a little bit. Um, in terms of the, the hardware, and I wanna just, you know, again, go through this fairly quickly and we can address some of your specific questions later on, is you know, make sure your computer is, uh, you don't have to have the latest top of the line computer, but you do need something that has enough processing so that your, your video isn't lagging and it's sort of pushing the limits of your, your processing power uh, of your machine. Because um, when you're doing a webinar, the worst thing to happen is, you know, as the host, your computer that you're using has is sort of running at maximum capacity and it's not able to do its thing and that's the worst thing so you just want to make sure you're using a computer that's reliable again it doesn't have to be the top of the line but it, you want to make sure that it does handle video and multitasking uh well because i i have my my browser um and you could be using your powerpoint and then you have your zoom session so there's there's a lot of processing that's happening in the back end and you want to have a computer that's able to sort of make you know make use of the different um, programs that are, are happening in uh, in your session. Uh, having an external monitor is great. Um, the, you know, the, the problem with using a laptop monitor, I, I've seen this where a lot of faculty are you know, teaching with their little laptop and there may be like, you know, 14 inch or 15 inch screen. It's just not enough real estate. I actually, you know, per, right now, I have two monitors in front of me. I, I know this is not common for a lot of people, but it's important. I have one side of my monitor where it's just my, my slides. And then the other side is where I get to see you all and, and also my notes. And and without having that real estate, it, it can be challenging because you know, you're, you're kind of having to constantly shift between the windows. And that's something you, you don't want to be doing too much if you don't have to. So just having your laptop or your computer connected to an external monitor that's, you know, um, allows you to kind of see enough and you can have enough real estate to put the different things you need to do while your session is going on is important. And, and I recommend maybe a seven, 27 inch uh, monitor is, you know, is a, a good 
you know, ideal. Uh, monitors are very, very affordable nowadays. I mean, you can probably get a 27 inch monitor in the US. I don't know how it is in the UK, but probably for $100 uh, or less. And um, any case, uh, so that's the monitor. That's because the American companies sell at lower prices in the United States. <laughs> yeah. Um, Headset is the other piece. I, I know this may look a little, you now I'm look like I'm a flight attendant. Uh, I, I personally prefer a headset over just using the, the mic from the laptop or the, uh, the, the, uh, mic the microphone or the speaker from the laptop because it, it just isolates all the, the, the audio just here. Because I'm in, you know, all, most of us are working from home nowadays and I have three kids, you know, they're, you know, they're in, in their own session. And sometimes, you know, I have three kids in taking different music lessons. And I, so I hear different instruments going off. And if I just use the, the microphone and the speaker on my desktop, you, you're going to hear everything you know, that's going to happen. That's happening in my house. And so I think having a headset or even you know, one of those, um, uh, you know, if you buy an iPhone, it comes with the sort of the little earbud with the mic, those would work too. So the idea is just to have something that will, so can confine your, your audio, uh, both the mic and the speaker so that it's not picking up all the surrounding sound. So that's important to keep in mind as well. And then lastly is about having a quality webcam. Uh, most webcams nowadays are fairly good quality. You know, the built-in laptops are, are fine. But you know, if you have an older machine, the webcam may be a little bit you know, old, like the you know, resolution might be lower quality. And you, know, you don't want to be a grain, like grainy image of, of you on, uh, on people's screen. So just having uh, somewhat of a, a decent modern camera would be important. Uh, but I would say that's probably the least important of things. We could have done this whole session without webcam and you know it would have worked just as fine because audio uh, is by far the most important and uh, you know, the audio and the video are the two most important things in, in a webinar. So um, l beyond sort of the essential hardware, I'm gonna talk about sort of the environment. Um, three things, and like I said, sound is is this key, you know, uh, sound, because if you are, so you want to think about sort of uh, the room that you're using and sort of the, the, whether or not there's a lot of echo or, you know, if there's a window you're next to or there's any hard surfaces, you know, anytime you're, you're in that kind of room, it just becomes echoey and then it creates sort of this, you know, uh, audio that it's hard to hear. And so you, you should uh, just pay attention to the sound that's in the room that you're in. And you know, obviously you wanna minimize any background noise. Uh, and in terms of lighting, you know, uh, I have just a basic desk lamp in front of me and you, know, you can see I, it lights my face fairly well. And of course I have the light um, you know, and from the monitor as well as the room. And it, you know, for the most part, I'm fairly well lit. You don't wanna be in a room where it's dark or, uh, or you don't want to have too much background light because that's gonna just blind everything, including you in the in the scene. Um, so just some sort of soft light in front of your face, making sure that you know people can see who you are. That's important. And then lastly, just uh, the background clutter. So I have a green screen right now going on with virtual background. Uh, if I take this down, you'd see the, my messy corner of the house. That's where we put all the you know, junk, whatever we don't know where to put stuff, we put it back there. And and you, I, and I don't wanna show my audience that. And so typically I would either uh, put up a green screen and do a virtual background, or I would use a room where I'm just showing a wall, you know, like a pretty plain wall or a corner of a room where you're not seeing a lot of the the clutter uh, those things are important so just you know basic things to keep in mind when you're uh, about your environment and then my my next uh, point here is about slide creation there was uh, somebody uh, in the registration asked about this and I can again in our Q&A we can go into a little bit more depth about the specifics but the three basic principles and this comes from um, there's a lot of research in sort of multimedia and I can, uh, I, I have a re reference link at the end of my slide that I'll share with you. I'll share the entire slide deck with Anne and Anne can distribute. And this comes from uh, Richard Mayer, who is a, um, a multimedia specialist. You know, he, he's uh, this, he wrote this in the, I want to say the nineties and the 20, 
years ago or so. And there are three principles I think are really applicable to slide creation. The first principle is uh, what he calls the multimedia principle, which is when you combine two mediums in a, pr a presentation, uh, for example, you want a word and a picture together, it produces greater learning outcome than if you just had a, a picture or just a word. So when you combine picture and a word, ideally you would create greater learning. That's the first principle. So you, uh, I, you know, I've heard of many presentation um, tips that are out there and like, and then, you know, they say there's the Steve, the Steve Job Apple presentation where you just show an image and then just let people you know, imagine what you're talking about and then you provide the content. And, and I don't know if that's, I mean, it, it works in certain settings when you're like attending a live session, but then if you just look at those slides after the fact, those picture slide deck doesn't give you much meaning or context after the fact. And so I don't think that's as useful as having the, actually the words and image and that way after the, the session you can share it and it still has uh, value for those who are looking at it. Uh, the second principle is a coherence principle, uh, which is basically reducing any kind of distractions uh, and unnecessary content uh, within your, your presentation. Uh, like in, if you've noticed in my slide, I have lots of white space and just a few content uh, on, on, on the slides. And so the, the things that are on here are, are intentional and they're meaningful. I don't have any extraneous uh, content on any of my slides unless you know, there's a I don't know decorative uh, content is another way of putting it so everything on my slides are intentional and they're they're there for a reason and you want to do that with your slide you don't want to extra things just because you want to fill it you know you want to actually have as much white space as possible so that you, your the eyes can focus on the key content and then finally the content uh, uh, contiguity principle, which is placing related uh, content in close proximity to each other. So there's two images here. Now the first, top image is not what you want to do where, you know, the, the reference, you know, if you have the, where ABC of a picture and then those things are then separated from the words. If you can, just to, to connect those two pieces, the, the more, um, uh, connected they are in terms of related ideas, the better, because it just, the brain functions much quicker to be able to connect, oh yeah, that's the tail, that's the body, that's the head, as opposed to having to reference like A, and then you have to look somewhere to find what A means or B or, or so on. So so that's just some basic tips and principles you can keep in mind as you create your slides. And then the, the last thing I wanna share here in this segment is about scripts. Um, I actually created a script and I'm going to share with you this, um, you know, sort of a template and it's a basic three column script. Um, it's actually two column if you don't count the, the very left column, which is just the numbering for every. Uh, so the, the first column would be what do you see what is on screen. And then the second column is what is heard now it's the narration and a webinar script or a presentation script uh, allows you to organize what is seen and what is heard in a chronological order. And that way, as you go th work through your presentation, as you're preparing, you kind of can see, okay, so I, I see in slide 15 here, uh, I have this image, but then what I'm saying doesn't seem to align with it or, or vice versa. Or I, I'm seeing I'm saying a lot of things in slide 10, but I'm not saying much in slide 20. Or I mean, you can visually see the sort of the weight of your of your presentation throughout um, the different slides, and so just having something basic as you know, like uh, uh, what is seen and what is heard column allows you to kind of organize your session very quickly. So um, just again, I, I'll share this with you so that you can go back and use this template um, and be able to create your own. So at this point, uh, I want to. Uh, take a moment and, and give you an opportunity to ask some questions. So I'm gonna go back to my, um, my list here. So Q and A, uh, we'll, we'll spend a couple, you know, maybe five minutes or so uh, if you have specific questions about the software, the hardware, the environment, the slides or the script. And you can maybe just to have an orderly process, if you can either raise your hand visually so I can see you, or you can uh, type your question in the chat and then I'll call on you. So, um, 
if you have specific questions about what we, so David, go for it. Oh, yes, I'm uh, often embarrassed because, you know, when I have webinars, uh, I have a bed right behind me and I have been wondering what, what to do about it. How do you create a background like yours? So, uh, for, so first of all, David, pets are actually good to have in the background. I've actually seen nope, people with pets. A Oh, a bed. Uh, so I, I thought I said a pet. <laughs> um, so I would recommend if you can maybe set up a desk where you uh, there's a wall or some sort of corner in, in your background where it's just it's just not cluttered and it doesn't have to be super clean. It just you just and some people what they do is they they sit with their you know, the garden to their back so that you know, it's, a, it's a nice view of the garden or, or it could be just a wall. So you just want to make sure you want to have some something that's not distracting. I mean the, the point is you don't want your your audience to be always looking at your background, trying to figure out like, what is that thing in that corner? Or what do they have in their wall? I mean, because then they're not paying attention to what you're saying or what, what's on the slide. So that's the point is to not have a distracting background. How, but, how do you create a virtual background like yours? So, so uh, like I said, I have a virtual, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick. So uh, in Zoom, there's a virtual background setting that you can use. Uh, and I just turned, uh, tur so if that's, do you see oh. how it's a green screen? Yeah. Uh, and if I, I could have like a, no, I could have any set of virtual backgrounds I wanted. Like I could have actually have a video of, uh, no, I'm on a beach, but of course this is not appropriate in this kind of setting. And so I'll, I tried to find something that's more neutral and that's, but it's just a green screen. And then in Zoom, um, there's a virtual background where you can upload an image or uh -huh. you, some basic uh, okay. virtual background. That's <clears throat> in, so. All right, uh, Tom, go for it. Um, uh, Mike, when you have the, uh, the grid up with the slide image word, do you just do screenshots for your images or is there some kind of way that you just move them in? Yes, so uh, images for your slides. So uh, in the reference section, I do provide you with a couple of resources of where you can either get um, royalty free stock images, or you can actually create some of your own images. So there's a very popular site called canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com. It's in the resources uh, and you can go there and create your own images. But uh, the one that I have here uh, is, comes from, I believe the, the site where I got the, um, the information about the multimedia principles. And that's just, this, a, just I'm asking a slightly different question. With your grid, you had the first column was number. The oh, second column I see. was I see. image. The third column was word. Did you just screenshot your 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 PowerPoint slide? Oh, slides? right there. Yes, right. This this <laughs> script. Okay, I, I was thinking you're you're talking about the. Uh, yeah, I, the I got multiple. millions of images. Yeah. Right so, so I would say yes. So what? What I did was I created my slides. I generated images. So in PowerPoint, you can actually export images uh, of each slide. And then okay. I just use that and put that in there as I'm doing my planning. So All I right. usually, and it's a, it's an iterative process. I mean, so as you work through things and you realize, oh, I, did, I, probably, I need to tweak this slide and you can do that. But the idea of this, the script template is it gives you an idea of organizing visually uh, uh, how the progression of the session. Excellent. Yeah. So maybe one more question and then we can move on. So, um, uh, Mark, go for it. Yeah, just to check, I was understanding you correctly. You were saying that when you were doing the presentation, um, you would use two screens uh, by using the extension facility, presumably. So you would have your script to your PowerPoint on one screen and then you'd have the normal screen <laughs> on the other. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. So, so the way I use my screen is one half of it is essentially my, my slides. Hmm. And then the other half is the Zoom stuff. Like I'm able to see you, uh, the, the images of everyone. I get to see the chat. I get to see the Zoom functions. And that's, that's how I'm managing my screen. Hmm. But you don't need to have two screens. You can actually split your, your monitor into two parts where 
part of it is your presentation yeah. and the other part is your, your Zoom yeah. functionality. Yeah. All right, Stuart. Um, Having two it. screens has nothing to do with Zoom. You can have two no, no. screens on any modern computer. Yes. And that will all work seamlessly with Zoom, Zoom yeah. as though you've just had a much bigger screen. Yes. So yeah. you, you don't, there's nothing special you need to learn about Zoom in this respect. Yes. Yeah. You, you just want to be uh, careful about having, like I've seen a faculty having a 13 inch laptop and trying to do their slides and then trying to do their Zoom and trying to do their chat. It just, there's just not enough space for all that. And so they're like co constantly toggling between different screens. And so it's a, you know, it just, the more real estate, the better. Can I ask a real technical question, just follow up on that. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're doing PowerPoint, you'll often have your script on one of the PowerPoints, but if you share screen, you can't show that. Can you split your screen down the middle and have one with your notes and another with a screen, or does it show the whole thing with two screens and everything? So so I'm, I'm particular right now I'm using Google slides, which is a web based PowerPoint and it allows you to share your presentation with the speaker notes and that's functionality is actually available inside PowerPoint as well. You can, you know, have a split screen where one part of it is the slide and the other part is your notes. And so that's what I'm using. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm only, yeah. So but with zoom and screen share, doesn't it just show everything? No, so I in Zoom you can screen share only a portion of your screen or a particular ah. window of your screen. You don't have to share everything that's on your screen. Okay. And so I'm only sharing a portion, which is the portion of the slide presentation, not anything else. Right. So. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure. Uh, so hold your question for now, uh, and we, we will have another opportunity where we can have Q and A. But I want to make sure we kind of move through some of the content. So, um, so I'm going to ask you to, you know, just take a minute here, 30 seconds, if you can, uh, whether it's your own notes or you can put it in the chat. Uh, just identify two areas that I talked about that you would like to work on, especially focus on in your next webinar. So is it the software issue? Is it a hardware issue? Is it an environment? Is it slides or a script? So just, just name two areas you want to focus on. Put that in the chat or just in your own notes. And then in 30 seconds, we're going to keep moving forward here. So five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so I uh, hope that at least you made a note to yourself in terms of what you wanna work on for your we uh, next webinar. So I'm gonna now talk about what to do when you start. And so this is where I'm gonna refer back to my own session, like now how I started in this session and whether or not I was successful in, in being active you know, from the get-go. Um, so three, sub points I have here, get personal, understand expectations and priming the pump. So personal connection, uh, a quote here I want to share. Uh, Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. I don't know if you know who said this. Um, it's been attributed to many people, but I, I think I found the source. And this is from uh, Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president of the United States. Uh, and I've heard this said a lot in education, especially primary school education. You know, uh, the key is to get personal with your participants up front. Um, you know, this is part of you know, uh, what I did in the beginning and when I asked you to change, add an adjective to your name was a way to engage you to you know, get to know who you are, to ask sort of like you know, a little bit about your personality, to ask, uh, I mean, just to give everybody an opportunity to speak. I think that's another way to connect and give people a, a way to engage. I mean, that, that's important. Um, and there are many, many strategies, and these are just a few. Again, I'm going to share the slides so you don't have to write them all down now. Um, but these personal, personalization strategies gives you a way to get at your audience so that they, they feel like you know, they are able to connect with you, that you know, they, they have established a social connection, a social presence with you. Um, you know, so I, I think, say, I use um, number one, I use number two, um, 
you know, I, and then maybe I, you can talk about some of the other, you know. So the, the, the idea is if you can like, you know, thanking participant by name. So as you guys were sharing, I was able, I tried my best to use your name in either asking you to share or to thanking you. So that, again, it's the, the idea is to personalize the, the interaction so that uh, your audience feel connected. And, and with Zoom, that's one of those things that, um, I mean, depending on the size, it may be the, you know, talking about limitations. I think Stuart earlier asked about the question about limitations. Uh, if you have more than 20 people, it does get overwhelming and you may not be able to personalize the experience for them as much as you can with fewer people. Uh, but the as, as best as you can, uh, especially if they're using chat and you see their name and just, you know, if you just mention their name and then that way they feel like they're being recognized and you know, whatever contributions they're making, they're, you know, they're, they're acknowledged for that. That's important. Um, understand expectations. Now, uh, you want to do it before, start at the start of it, during, and at the end, as much as you can, because, uh, you know, everybody has expectations coming into whatever session, whether it's a webinar or a meeting. I mean, they, they have, you know, in uh, spoken and unspoken expectations. And so what I try to do uh, in the way I set up this webinar was now in registration form, I gave you a spot, a, a space to add specific questions. Now, and usually those questions come up sort of the top of mind things that are in the participants, uh, you know, they're thinking about those things and that's what they want to be addressed. Uh, that's what they want the, the webinar to address. And then at the start of this session also, I asked that question about, you know, uh, what does success look like for you or what's success for you from this session? And so that's something that I try to do. And then you know, throughout this session, you know, I, what I will try to, and I hope I've been doing is just continue to come back to like, like giving you opportunities to ask questions and you know, making sure that you know, the questions that were raised earlier are being addressed along the way and, and pulling in the pieces as best as I can. And so, the, and then at the end, what I'll do at the end of this is I'll give you an opportunity to give, you, give me feedback about like, did it go well? well, did you get what you thought you needed out of the session? And again, uh, you're not going to meet all the expectations. That, and that's not the point of, you know, about meeting all expectations. But the, the point is, do you understand what the expectations are of your audience? And are you trying to meet as much of it uh, as you can so that they feel like they're going to walk away with something that's meaningful, that's, you know, um, that's particularly relevant to them? And then the third point I want to make is about priming the pump. And this is just the, uh, it's a learning uh, pedagogical uh, strategy. And, and the idea is you want to, learners, when they come to a new subject or a new idea, a new topic, uh, they spend a lot of cognitive uh, mental energy trying to grasp and understand because they're, it's new. And, and the best thing you can do is to prime the pump, which is to give your learner a way to quickly grasp on something that they already know. And what I try to do in priming the pump in the beginning is to give you the image of that picture of that, you know, that uh, lady, she's looking bored you know, into the camp and the computer. I mean, that's something that everybody can relate to. And you no, know, they, they either you've been in one of the sessions and you're one of those you know, people, or you've been on the other side where like, oh, you no, know, it looks like everybody's just not engaged right now. And and that was my way of priming the pump of giving you some ideas of things that you already know and then being able to build on top of that. And so that's just you no, know, that's what priming the pump. And so if you can use use different ways to get people to engage in the new uh, ideas using ideas they already know. So it's just, it's pulling from their prior knowledge, experience, and understanding. And so let's take a minute here and brainstorm other personalization strategies. And also it's an opportunity if there are maybe, if, uh, if you can share an idea or you can ask a question. So uh, let's take another five minutes here um, and, and I'll give you an opportunity to ask questions or to share a personalization strategy that you found effective that, or you've seen other people use. And if possible, the room, the, the, the folks in the room, because I, I know I've been neglecting you. Uh, so if you want to share something, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. So can you just hide the you need to see what his question was earlier. Yeah, I don't understand the question. 
Yeah. So my question is basically, oh. what personalization personalization strategies have you uh, have you either used or seen, or that you you want to use that you know, in in terms of how to connect and engage with your audience? Uh, what I have used frequently in seminars, ordinary face-to-face -face seminars, but I haven't tried in webinars because I don't know how, how it would work, is asking one or two participants to share their experience upon a relevant topic. I mean, something yes. relevant, immediately yes. relevant to the discussion. Yeah. So that, that can become the focus of the discussion rather than something that I present. Yeah, yep, that's a great strategy. And you can definitely use that in a webinar setting as well. Just, you know, having them share a story or something um, about related to the topic. And you had your hand up earlier. So I was just going to say, ask a question. So can you remember the first time when you um, just just to, to actually get them to personalize it themselves? Yep, asking a question is a great way to engage your audience and also to kind of get at what they're thinking and um, any other you know, ideas or comments or questions? I mean, one thing um, I tend to do, um, and it's really what you did, but just to top and tail it was to ask, you know, what you want to get out and actually write it down on the whiteboard. It's a virtual whiteboard or something so that actually people um, are, see it, are taking it seriously yes. and then come back to it and check it off so that there's, there's sort of, you, you're, they actually believe that you're personalizing it for, yeah. for them rather yeah. than just asking them and then running through what you do anyway. Yes, yes, yeah. And, and I could have done that as you were you know, sharing about your, what yeah. success yeah, yeah, yeah. looks like for you. I could have put that in the chat or I could have asked everybody to like add that to the chat so that everybody's able to see the, that list. Mm -hmm. now, once you document it somewhere, it yeah. kind of, it, it has that permanence to it <laughs> that feels like, okay, I, I, I was heard, you know, I was acknowledged and so. Yeah, so what I usually do sometimes is when I'm speaking on a particular topic or theme, I would talk about the assumptions that I had myself, you know, the misunderstanding of the yep. term in terms of my understanding and the, so that people will not feel stupid when they misunderstand or do not get something. So I yes. share the, my experience of having made mistake and not understanding yes. things. Yes, yes. Sharing your mistakes, your vulnerabilities, uh, your mishaps. It humanizes and it personalizes the, the experience for people uh, because it, yeah, people don't want to ask or say things if they feel like, oh, I, I don't want to be the, the fool in the room here. No, I, uh, I want others. No, if, if you share your own personal sort of mishaps, then it, you know, it kind of eases the, the mood for everybody. Maybe one more comment or question and then we can keep moving. I actually typed this into the chat, but it's basically about building connections within the group. Uh, there are various ways of doing that, but I'll put it in the chat. Yes, thank you, uh, Mark. So, yes. Yeah, that, that's really, that's good in terms of memes, uh, logos, images. I, I, I was in, intrigued by giving the group a name or a mascot. Yeah. <laughs> an example of that. Well, I think that, that it, it, it works if you have groups of people in, in the session, yeah. but maybe that we'll, we'll try to apply that in a moment when we do the breakout rooms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, each uh, we'll, we'll come up with a, a group name, but all right, let me keep moving so that uh, we, we want to make sure I'm looking at the time. We have 30 minutes left. So, so we talked about uh, preparing thoroughly. We talked about starting actively, and now I'm going to you know, dive a little dip deeper in terms of engaging meaningfully. And again, I hope that I've been demonstrating what I'm talking about. So it's not the first time that you're hearing, like I'm not just sort of theoretically talking about engagement and, and not doing engagement in my session. So hopefully everything we've been doing is about engaging meaningfully with the audience. So, uh, so I'm going to talk about four specific um, things about engagement and, and, and we'll get to that in a, in a minute. So here's a quote about engagement. Um, and you probably have uh, seen this before. Uh, I hear and I forget. I see and I remember and I do and I understand. 
So this comes from Confucius. Um, and, and this, you know, if you want to talk about active learning, <laughs> uh, uh, pedagogy, it, it, it can, you know, dates back to, I don't know when Confucius was living, but you no, know, it's a long time ago. And so the, the idea is you want to not just talk about it or let people see what it is. You want them to engage with it, to actually do something with it. Because the more engaged they are, the more they will sort of, um, take that into their their learning and, and, and hopefully put it into their long-term uh, uh, memory so that they can actually use, uh, pull it out when they need it in, in their session. And so um, this is where we're gonna use a, uh, one of the features in Zoom, which is called a breakout room. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna explain to you the, the instructions first, and then I will then break you into different groups and, and you have your own rooms. And then in each of your room, you will then discuss and try to solve. So here's a problem for you to solve uh, in your group. So if you were to quantify engagement during a webinar, what would your formula look like? <laughs> So the question is, if you were to quantify engagement during a webinar, what would your formula look like? So you, what I'm going to do is now create three breakout rooms, and then I'm going to put, I'm going to try to be as even as I can. It's going to be random. I'm going to randomly put, you no, know, you guys into maybe, I don't know, how many rooms should we have here? We have 12, 13. So maybe we'll have three rooms. And then it'll be probably about four-ish four -ish people per room. And then your job is to come up with the answer to this question, okay? Quantify engagement during webinar, okay? So you got that? So I'm gonna create three rooms um, and then I will automatically assign you and then you're gonna... Um... So go ahead and go to your breakout room and uh, in three minutes, I will pull you all back. So go ahead and click on yeah, the room that I just invited you. Hey, Liz, are you still on that room? Oh, there you are.
Uh, oh, okay. So see the comments, like the people. Okay. All right. So I, I want. Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> I know you probably didn't have enough time in three minutes to find a solution to the question of how to quantify engagement in a webinar, but we're going to go with what you have. Mm -hmm. So let's go with uh, room one. So it was Ann, Ben, Paul, and Tim. So what did you guys come up with? <laughs> So who's going to be the, the presenter or a speaker for, uh, for the first group? Anne, Ben, Paul, and Tim. I think I'm um, Tim. Okay. All right, Tim, I think you. As if I can remember it. Um, <laughs> it started off with a number of people who, who, who asked questions or, or intervened in some way. Okay. Times, uh, I can't remember what the, the, the... The number of interventions number of interventions uh, minus the number of people who are fast asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so number, uh, also, oh, I'm trying to write a number of people. Well, you know what? I'm not going to try to write it out for you. <laughs> but basically the, the actively engaged minus the people who aren't active and that's yeah. your engagement. Okay. So sounds sounds reasonable. All right, um, let's go to group, the second group. David, uh, the the conference room, uh, John and Liz. So E equals to MC squared. Engagement <laughs> equals to motivation times comments and contributions that people make. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that works well. <laughs> yeah, okay, that that's. Thank you. And then the third yeah. group. Uh, is that us? Yes, yeah, so Mark, <laughs> Stuart, Tom, and Terry. Oh, Mark made the most yeah, yeah, yeah. suggestion. So, Mark, do you want to speak? I, I could, uh, we didn't come up with a formula, I'm afraid, Mike, but uh, <laughs> some of the things is it's about how many people are speaking. Okay. Um, uh, and whether there are some that aren't speaking at all. Uh, it's about how many people switch on their blank screen and obviously go off and do something else. Yep. <laughs> um, and it's also about watch, watching, people's, watching people's eyes because if they're going backwards and forwards across the screen, they're yep. probably doing their emails while they're yep. listening to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We know an important point on that is, is that often eyes will avert when they're actually looking at the screen depending on where it is on a big screen so it looks like they're yeah. looking away <laughs> when in fact yeah. and, I, and i've noticed this because because if, 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 if there's a share screen yeah it looks like i'm looking off when i follow that but in fact yeah, yeah. You know, depending on your your screen we orientation are, we are, and, yeah we are simply not taken in by that um no tom you've been doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah this is this is actually a fundamental limitation, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. the technology ha has certain transforms in it which are not appropriate. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you all for your participation. And you no. Know, um, so, one really effective engagement strategy is what I just did: is to sign a problem for uh, individuals or a group to solve or a job to do. Because when you do that, then you, you're creating engagement, like you're, you're giving them opportunity to invest in that topic or that subject matter. And so, you know, just, it was three minutes long. It wasn't a lot of time, but then, you know, you, you know, you, as a, as a group, you were able to build and you know, do some collaborative teamwork. And then also you were able to at least, you know, dig a little deeper into that. And so I can almost guarantee if you don't take anything away from this session, maybe a week from now, two weeks from now, you might actually remember your conversation in what the engagement formula is more than anything else I've talked about, because that was when you were most engaged with your you know, colleagues about the subject matter that we're talking about uh, so and so here's my I'll share with you my engagement formula so engagement for me is the number of active participants and I'll, I'll define what active means um, over divided by the total number of participants um, so the the idea is you no know, so active is anyone who posts anything in the chat respond to the poll spoke up interacted uh, use the reaction, join the breakout room, etc. They did something. You divide that by a total number of participants. And if you have a, a one, that would be a total engagement. 
And I can pretty confident say that so far I have a total engagement in this webinar <laughs> because just the way I've defined it. <laughs> but no, so I just, you know, this is just one idea. Um, I mean, uh, obviously, you know, this is, there are different ways to measure engagement because you now you want to have depth and you want to have sort of the breadth of, of engagement too. And so, but the, the point is that you, you want to in, give people an opportunity to do something that they can then invest in their own learning. Otherwise, if, if they're just passively consuming content, they're probably not going to get much out of it uh, at the end of it. So, um, so the four you know, ways you can do engagement with Zoom or most video conferencing tools are these. Now you, you give them a chance to vote. Uh, and, and you don't actually have to use the voting polling app. You can just man, like you say, you know, you raise your hand if you believe or whatever. And, and that could be a quick, easy way to do that. And as if you do that in person, um, you can have them write something in chat. You can have you know, them speak up and you can use the uh, breakout room. So um, here's some more engagement strategies. Um, and again, I'll share the slide with you so that you can look at all these. Uh, I will also provide you a link to uh, hundreds of these uh, active learning techniques. It's used, you know, you can use this in the classroom, you can use this in a webinar online. I mean, they're just, uh, you can use in pretty much any kind of settings and be able to, you know, do that uh, with your audience. Uh, and you can see uh, in today's session, I've used quite a few of these idea, uh, uh, activities already, and I'll, I'll continue to do them before we end. So this brings us to the last part of our session. So we have 17 minutes left. So I'm doing pretty good in time. Um, you know, we, uh, we've sort of talked about the, the idea of you know, preparing, starting, engaging. And then, so this is where we're ending. So, um, and there are just really two points I wanna make about uh, ending reflectively. Uh, when you uh, get to the end of your session, you, know, you wanna give your audience an opportunity to really like summarize and synthesize all that they've taken in. Uh, because learning happens when the brain is able to consolidate information and then it puts it into sort of the long-term memory. Uh, if, uh, if you don't give your audience a chance to kind of slop and to reflect, and to kind of think about what they just learned. It's almost like all the, all the stuff you just did be prior to that, it's almost wasted. And, and that's why it's so important in your webinar to give some time at the end for them to reflect. And so that's what I'm gonna do right now for you. So this is a, a real easy, quick technique that I have used often in the physical classroom as well as the online class, as well as in webinar. It's, it's called three, two, one. Uh, three things you've learned, two things you will, uh, you, you will promise yourself you will pr pr practice in the next week or two, and then one question you still have. So if you can, just think about three, these three, two, th three, two, one, th uh, and then put that in the chat. So I'll give you maybe two minutes to respond to this so that everybody has an opportunity. So just in your chat window, so if you, uh, the way you can open your chat is by looking at your bar. There should be a little chat uh, button. If you click on that, uh, just put three, uh, the three things you learn, and it could be just a word or a phrase. You no, know, you don't have to do elaborate, um, you know, proses or anything like that. So three things you learn, two things you will practice, and one question you still have. And you don't want us in rooms for this? No. <laughs> uh, I, I, well, I just want you to put it in chat. So if you, if you can, for maybe for the folks in the room, you guys can... Um, so to everyone. Uh, you, but yeah, so actually share it to everyone so that everybody could to see what else other people are learning. So yeah, share it to everybody. That would be great. And if you want to sort of shorthand this, you can just take one of those things and just, you know, you can just put, pose a question or you can pose a, a practical thing that you will practice or you can post something you learn.
I'll give you 30 more seconds here. Okay. Well, thank you for your contributions. Um, I want to let me see, maybe pick out a few things in what's shared that maybe we can talk about. So, um, Tim had a question about how does moving from live seminar to virtual change things and. Um, I'm not quite sure if you mean, so I don't know, Tim, do you want to quickly explain your well, question? Yeah, um, I mean, the temptation when doing um, uh, uh, a, video, a video seminar is, is to do exactly what you do when you have a live seminar. So what, what, is, what is going to change? What do I need to think about? that is going to be different yeah. from i mean some of your your being you know, some of your advice is about any <laughs> seminar but what's is special to the computer seminar yeah well I, I would say in a lot of ways they are the same because you're engaging with human beings and you now when you're engaging with human beings that you know, they're social beings and they want to know that they're heard. They want to know that, that questions are being addressed. They want to engage. I mean, so in many respects, they're the same. The difference is sort of the, you, you know, I think there was a comment, I forget who said this earlier about, you wanna make the technology invisible so that when they're in the virtual, in the virtual environment, in the, the seminar, the sort of the, the, the virtual seminar setting, that the technology almost becomes a non-issue. I mean, that, like uh, that the, the session that they just attended, whether it's online or in person, it's almost virtually the same in terms of what they took away. That's what I think, what's, that's what we're trying to strive towards. So in, in, in so many ways, um, the, the technology, if you can make that invisible or less friction involved, then the better. Because the, the best, I'd, I'd say the best virtual seminars is when you don't even consider it a virtual seminar. You just thought, that was an amazing seminar. I got something out of it. I found something useful. I was able to take away and use it. So uh, so that's that's how I would answer that question. I mean, that, there are, you know, I think the, going to the point of, uh, I think Stuart had a, a comment about what's fundamentally different about online teaching. Um, I think there is, you know, obviously you don't have the same full in-person cues that, you know, when you're in a room, you can sense the, 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 the environment in the room, whether people are engaged, whether people are, are disengaged. Uh, and that's harder to do uh, in a virtual setting because, you know, it's a 2D kind of experience. Uh, but at the same time, I would say there are a lot more uh, tools in the online setting that gives you feedback uh, that gives you an opportunity to say, okay, are people engaged? Are they looking at you? Are they, you know, doing something out? I mean, the things that we just talked about in terms of engagement. Uh, so I think many things are the same and, and, and the limitations are, you know, the technology in terms of like, I think showing, you know, if you really want to talk about the technical limitation, uh, the ability to show videos are going to be limited, like you know, the or, or kind of the interactive stuff, the simulation. Um, those are a little harder because you know, it requires bandwidth and making sure all the devices are up, you know, up to par to be able to do those things. But I would say, in terms of the human element of a, a seminar, it's the same. You know, you want to keep that going, and that's what ultimately matters most uh, to people who are attending is sort of the human element. And so, um, and then the one big plus point I would have said about the uh, online stuff is is the use of breakout rooms, because when we do this, you know, talk to your neighbour, etc., et yeah. et when you, and they're awful. With breakout <laughs> rooms, it, I think it, it potentially can work or does work. 
Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, and I, I, yeah, I think in a physical room, you can still have them break out into a room like, no, three of you do this group discussion and three of you and, but it takes a little more time and it's just noisy and sometimes it's hard to focus. Whereas in a, a Zoom breakout room, it's a lot more just easy. I like, no, and you get to focus. And yes, I agree with you. Um, so I'm going to uh, stop there in terms of uh, commenting on the on the summary of things. And then this next slide is uh, just a, a way to reflect. And so we have about eight minutes left and uh, I just have you know, my concluding slides after this. So we, we have some, you know, uh, some time. So uh, I'm gonna just ask you like, you know, what's one tip or one strategy that you will try to employ in your next uh, webinar. And I, Anne sent me the schedule of what you guys will be doing in November. So it's you know, about a month from now. Uh, some of you will be actually doing your, your next webinar then, or maybe sooner. Um, the question is, you know, what, what will you try to take away from today's session uh, and apply to that uh, context? Um, so I'll stop sharing my screen. So this is another technique is if you want to create more human, uh, humane interactions online is you stop sharing your presentation and then go into sort of the gallery view so that mm -hmm. we get to see each other in bigger, you know, uh, bigger screen. So uh, maybe, you know, we'll have you know, a few people uh, share, like what's one thing that you will do your best to try to apply from today's session in your next uh, uh, webinar? All right, uh, Terry. Um, I really like the idea of icebreakers, even online. You got used to icebreakers when you had normal training, and but the idea of using an icebreaker online, I found to be a really helpful. Okay, so you're gonna try to do that in your next session. Yep. Okay, thank you, Terry. I will hold you to it. <laughs> no, the group will hold you to it. <laughs> John has. John Padward. Hi, John. Yeah, got it. John. Get people in personally engaged right from the start. Mm -hmm. yep. I'm, I mean, there's so many ways to do it. Yes, but, yes. Um, the particular yes. technique. Yes, you um, you get you get them right from the get go. That's the important part. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'd say within the first three minutes, you want to engage them. Otherwise, you know, it's almost like you know you've sort of lost your your first impression moment. So. Uh, Mark, I think you had your hand up. Yeah, you're muted right now, so okay. if you can. You're already already doing it wrong. He's muted. <laughs> the first thing I've learned is to unmute yourself when you want to speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one, one, another thing I've learned today, which I want to do differently in the future, is using breakout rooms for shorter periods. Um, I've always thought of breakout rooms as something you do for ten minutes uh, last, but doing it for three minutes has worked well today. So uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, breakout rooms are great for sure. And yes, you can do it for longer periods of time too. If you have, you know, a bigger kind of question or a bigger topic to discuss, then yeah, maybe a longer period of time is more applicable. Uh, Stuart. Uh, it's not really something I've learned today, but it's something which I think is important. So am I allowed to say that or not? Go for it. Uh, some of us have continued doing a book club on Zoom. And one of the things that predominant with older people, and one of the things that brings out is it's useful to separate somebody doing the technology from somebody leading the group. Because even if you know it quite well, yep. leading the group and doing the technology are two different things. Yep. So, I mean, yep. obviously you've done it very well, but I, th I think in a group of any size, it's worthwhile considering whether you should separate the role of the person who's actually, if you like, leading the discussion yeah. with the person who's handling the technology. Yeah. That's a great tip. Uh, yes. So if you have a co-pilot, someone who can yeah. take care of the technology in the back end exactly. in terms of being able to monitor the chat and share the screen and, and sort of do the, the administrative end of things and you focus on the content that would be ideal, um, but no. Some of us maybe you know, don't have that luxury, and so you just like have to you know, do both. If you're a high school teacher, yeah. 
Oh, yes. So yeah, great, uh, great tip, Stuart. Uh, I think it was David earlier, you had your hand up. I don't know if you want to share. I uh, just wanted to say, um, I understand less is more. Uh, in my next webinar, I'll make sure I don't have too much of content. What is really important is to make sure everyone understands what I have to present to them. And I make sure that everyone, at least most of the people participate in what's going on. Yes, yes, I, I totally agree with you. Less is more uh, because it doesn't make sense to push all your content out and people take 5% of it. You rather have yeah. people, you know, you push 50% of the content and people take 100% of that with them yeah. uh, because, uh, yeah, you're right. You know, less is more. And, and, and I would say related to that is uh, the brain can only handle so much in a 90 minute or one hour session. And so you don't want to overwhelm them because now if you overwhelm them, it's, it's game over. Right? It doesn't matter what else you're saying. They're not listening. It's, there's no you know, cognitive room to fill in their brain with more stuff at that moment. So, yeah, good point. Anyone else want to share one strategy they'll try to employ in their next webinar? I think the, uh, the skill of um, exporting the PowerPoint <laughs> slide to those notes the planning notes yes i want to do that yes yeah that, i i hope that yeah proves helpful because then you can you can also do uh, like what i try to do and i think it worked out well today is when i was doing my script i was able to do my timing there too like yeah. i was gonna you know yeah. 50 minutes here five minutes there or this this particular slide's gonna take a little more time so i want to make sure we allocate time and so that that way you're able to manage your time for your whole session. You're you're not rushing through your content or you're not ending with a lot of time on here on your hand. So, uh, all right. So we have one minute left and I want to make sure we definitely don't go over. Uh, so I have just, you know, my concluding slides here. So uh, some basic and general tips uh, that I always share with any kind of webinar when it, you know, you're teaching practical things is take small steps. No, you, if you learn something you know, new, just take, do that one thing. <laughs> uh, don't fail, a fear of failure. Um, seek help, you know, your colleagues all around, you know, there are so many of you guys, you can just call each other up and say, hey, you remember that webinar we'd learned about XYZ? You know, find, you know, try to see if you can seek help from your colleague. Focus on long-term goals. So you don't have to master all the content and all the techniques today. You know, maybe set goals for a month from now, a year from now, five years from now, where do you want to be? And then finally just make it fun, you know, because you know, the more fun, the, the more uh, interesting and, and uh, enjoyable it is. And here are the, the resources. And that basically concludes our time together. And we are at 8.30. <laughs> well, thank you, Mark. It was excellent, excellent session. I'm very, very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. So what I will do, I'll stop the recording. And then if there are any 